So I want to talk about a dude named Matt Rowan. Uh, like I said, y'all on Instagram and here on YouTube and Facebook, y'all listen, Matt Rowan is becoming very popular for all the wrong reasons. Y'all listen, this is somebody from my home state of Oklahoma. Y'all just honestly, I grew up in a, in a, in a small town in Oklahoma about uh, two hours northwest of her in Dallas, Texas, 20 minutes from the state line of Texas. Hey, mama, how you doing? What's up? My, 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 my birth mama is right here. Hey, mama, how you doing? So anyways, listen, I want to talk about Matt Rowan. All right. He is Helen from my home state of Oklahoma, the good state of Oklahoma, her in the South. And he said he was caught on microphone saying a racial slur towards high school girls. Now, y'all, I know about Norman and I know about Midwest City. Both of those, uh, Midwest City is a, is a city inside Oklahoma City. And then Norman is a suburb right outside of Oklahoma City. Y'all know where the University of Oklahoma is. So anyways, um, he got caught on the microphone saying a racial slur. And, be, and he said the racial slur towards the Norman girls, Norman high school girls. Now, keep in mind, y'all, this is a person who is saying these things about kids, about kids. What does that say about this man's character? All right, we're going to jump into that here in a little bit. But listen, he said this about them, and he said, he, he said, F and N's, I hope they lose. And he said that about them because they were kneeling during the national anthem, all right? And then what to add insult to injury, this man comes out with a press release. And let me look here. Yeah, a press release. And y'all, I have to read some of this press release to y'all because it's just ridiculous, y'all. Matt Rowan, he says, I'm Matt Rowan. On Thursday, March the 11th, 2021, most regret most regrettably uh, made some statements that I can't that cannot be taken back. Yeah, you're right. They can't be taken back. During the Norman High School girls basketball game against Midwest City, I made inappropriate and racist comments, believing that the microphone was off. <laughs> the, it, listen, he even he said believing the microphone was off. So let me so listen, listen. Hey, what's up? Ryan, how you doing, bro? It's good. I'm glad you up on here. That's what's up, cuz. Anyways, um, yeah, so he said, I made the comments believing that the microphone was off. As if it makes it even better, if it makes it better that the microphone, that you thought the microphone was off. If anything, it really reveals what's in your heart. But anyways, I'm jumping the gun because <laughs> it makes no difference if the microphone was on or off. You still said it. Um, but he says, um, the microphone, believing that the microphone was off. However, let me state immediately that this is no excuse. Such comments should have never been uttered. Now, listen, y'all, the man says there is no excuse while making an excuse for what he said by making an excuse for what he said. He's saying, hey, there's no excuse, but he's in the midst of making an excuse. And I'm going to get into this excuse here in a minute. He says such comments should have never been uttered. I am a family man. Here we go. I am a family man. I am married. I have two children and at one time was a youth pastor. Oh my gosh. I continue to be a member of a Baptist church. Let me tell y'all something. All that stuff he just said, you know who else has those same things in common with him? Ku Klux Klansmen. All right. They were Jordans. <laughs> They're married. They have children. They go to church. Some of them are pastors. Some of them are ministers and deacons and all of that. And what? You're the everyday person. I love how he tries to throw in all these things like, you know, oh, I'm just a normal person just like you. Mess me with that. You Listen, come on now. Who are you fooling? You're not fooling nobody. We know, okay, great. You used to be a youth pastor. It's probably a good reason why you ain't a youth pastor no more. And you're a member of a Baptist church. Now, see, this is where it gets this is where it gets really sticky with me. All right, because I hate when people throw that they're a Christian in the mix when they get caught doing dirt. Like, look, you was you if this was any other situation, would you be throwing up your Christianity at that time? Would would you do that? 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the truth comes out. Yes, sir. Look, that's right. Um, exactly. That's what that's what that's what it does. Reveals the heart. The truth came to light. Yes, his racism was exposed. Exactly. 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 And so listen, listen, wolf and sheep's clothing, all that, y'all. Thank y'all. Keep those comments coming. But listen, <laughs> this is what he says after this. All right. Because listen, all that stuff doesn't make you sound like a better person to me. If anything, if you've been sitting up in church, if you've been a pastor, if you sitting up all that makes me question the people around you because we finna get to that here right here. He says, I have not only embarrassed and disappointed myself. I, well, he kind of, he wrote this kind of wrong myself. I have all, I have embarrassed and disappointed my family and my friends. Let me tell y'all something. All right. Now, listen, yes, you have embarrassed your family and your friends. And listen, we don't know your family and your friends. So we don't know if they really are embarrassed or if they actually encourage this behavior. You know why? Because we don't know your friends. I would hope, we would hope that your family, we would hope that your family and your friends frown upon this. But let me tell you something about friends. And we're going to talk about friends later on in this live, y'all. Listen, birds of a feather flock together. It is hard to believe that you're the lone ranger in your whole group of friends, all right? I have to believe that if you feel comfortable saying that, that there's other people in your circle that feel comfortable with you saying that and probably say that to you. And this whole kneeling before the national anthem thing ain't new. This is this is old at this point. So it leads me to believe that if you said that about to some high school girls kneeling, you probably said the same thing about Colin Kaepernick. You probably said the same thing about all the NBA and NFL players that kneel during the national anthem. This ain't your first rodeo because please don't play us for a fool. I ain't no fool. I may have been born at night and I don't think a mama you on her. I don't think I was born at night, but if I was born at night, I wasn't born last night. All right. We ain't no fool. So anyways, and, and this is the kicker right here. The dude tried to blame his stuff on diabetes, type one diabetes. He says, listen, I will state that I suffer type one diabetes. And during the game, my sugar was spiking. Come on, man. Look, 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 look. While not excusing my remarks, you just said a whole bunch of excuses. And now you're trying to make an excuse talking about your sugar was spiking. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, let me go. Let me can let me continue, and then I'm gonna get in on this. While not excusing uh my remarks, it is not unusual when my sugar spikes that I become disorient disoriented. But you, were you that disoriented to where you could still tell that there was high school girls out there playing? Were you that disoriented where you can make a racial slur? Like that's hard to believe that somebody's sugar spiking is gonna make them say some racial stuff. Like I know people who sugar spike all the time. That don't make them a racist. They don't become, they don't instantly become racist. That's like somebody saying, you know what? I'm going to rob a bank. And you know what? My, my, my excuse is going to be, hey, my sugar was spiking. Let's go on a murdering spree and just, you know, we just start doing stuff. My sugar was spiking. Try that in the court of law and see how that happens. See what happens. Listen, he says he becomes disoriented and often say things that are not appropriate as well as hurtful. OK, you must be a crazy person to live with then, because uh, I do not believe that I would have made such horrible statements absent my sugar spiking. He must think. Amer yes, yes. At Ryan Adams, low sugar is true. <laughs> he said low sugar is truth serum for do. <laughs> What sugar intake exactly, Mama? Uh, uh, Mama Remote, exactly, and, and exactly, Mama. Amen, exactly, y'all. Yeah, yeah, Kath Edwards. Yeah, so this is what uh, someone from my beloved state here in the south, here in Oklahoma, like I said, I'm in Dallas, Texas. Oklahoma's the right at the border, and um, he said a racial remark during a basketball, during a girls' high school basketball game, called them F and N's, and I hope that they lose. So that's what's going on, Kath. We're talking about that. We're going to get into some more stuff that jumped off uh, last year and that jumped off this year. But listen, you're not fooling anybody. That stuff is in you. All right. That's in your heart. All right. That's in your heart. You're not fooling anybody. That stuff was already in you. 
that stuff don't come magically come within you, uh, you know, when your sugar starts spiking. You know what I'm saying? That didn't just happen. All right. That didn't just happen. That stuff was already in you. We don't know if you were raised that way or not, but it's in you. It's in you. And the sugar had nothing to do with it coming out. All right. You're just mad or you're just embarrassed that the stuff actually came out. See, people now people see who, who, who you who for who you really are. And this is what makes people upset because you can never tell who's a racist and who's not because you can't see somebody's heart. But now we see what's in your heart. Now you're trying to convince us that we didn't hear that. No, we heard exactly what we needed to hear. And so, y'all, we really need to um, continue to call this stuff out. It's not enough for people to uh, be uh, not a racist. That's that's not enough. We want you to be against racism. All right. And racism in all forms. You know, if it's racism towards black people, white people and brown people, uh, all types of people, all shapes, all forms of racism are wrong y'all know what i'm saying it's wrong and so that is the that is the heart of the matter um that stuff is wrong to be saying and we really need to get a hold of this you know what i'm saying and so like i don't need you know we don't need white guilt i don't need you to feel guilty we don't need all that i don't need you to guilt, feel guilty all i need is for you to not shoot me when you see me in the street all i need is for you to actually give me the loan when i qualify for the loan and not hike up the interest rate because of the pigment on my skin. That's what I need. I don't need sympathy. I don't need, uh, I don't need, uh, guilt. All right. I ain't in the, I ain't in the guilt business. I'm not trying to make anybody feel guilty. Ryan, that's what's up, man. From the abundance of the heart. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. That's exactly. Thank you for bringing that scripture up. from the abundance of the heart. Uh, the mouth will speak. Exactly. Exactly. Bro. So, so yeah. So anyway, so, um, I hope, I hope, this man gets right with Jesus because it's evident that this man does not know Jesus but you, because you cannot be a racist and then claim to know Jesus. All right. So Matt Rowan, uh, get your life right. All right. Get your life right. I know that may be an outdated statement, but that's really what I feel in my heart. How about that? 